Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Sam Connolly, and I'm coming to you live from my living room. I'm an educator at the Children's Museum and Theater of Maine. And this morning, I'm coming to you here because quite clearly the museum and theater is closed. So I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe right now. But in the meantime, I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite kinds of science. And I'm wondering if anybody knows about it. So it's called paleo art. So maybe you've heard the first part of that word before, paleo. Has anybody ever heard of a paleontologist? So that first part, paleo, actually means old or ancient. And paleontologists study prehistoric creatures, like dinosaurs. So a paleo artist is, what do you think a paleo artist might be? <laughs> so a paleo artist is an artist who makes depictions of old creatures. So why I love them is they can use all sorts of kinds of sciences and put them together. So they use biology, they use genetics, they use um, obviously paleontology, they look at fossils, they look at chemistry of things, and we're going to talk about how those sciences come together to create the most accurate, most whole picture of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures that we can. So another kind of neat thing about paleontology and paleoartistry is things are constantly changing and evolving. There's so much that we don't know about dinosaurs. So when something new comes, it's constantly changing and evolving our idea and our images in our head of what dinosaurs look like. And you've probably seen paleo art before. So if you've ever looked in a dinosaur book or even Jurassic Park, the movies, especially the first movie, they use really accurate science to the time. And now we know dinosaurs maybe look a little bit different, but it's always evolving and changing. So the first thing I wanna talk about is there was actually a, an article published last month in March about this teeny tiny dinosaur. And I'll actually put the link in here. A teeny tiny dinosaur that lived on an island. And so they found its skull. It was only about as big as this bead right here, 14 millimeters long. And it was captured in amber. And so its skull was small, but it had more teeth than any other toothed dinosaur that we found before. And it actually had wings. So it was about the size of a hummingbird, a bumblebee hummingbird, about as big as this truck right here. And so it had tons of teeth and it had large eye sockets, deep eye sockets on the side of its head. So think about that. It had really large eyes, a really big, spa big space for an eye, almost like an owl, and it had lots of teeth. Do you, so do you think this animal was prey or a predator? Scientists know now that there was a little dinosaur about as big as a hummingbird that was a ferocious predator. So they think they ate little arthropods and little insects and maybe even some fish. And they lived on an island in the Mesozoic time. So if I was a paleo artist, I would imagine the size and I would look at what the environment was like at that time. So this little dinosaur lived around the same time as Stegosaurus and T-Rex and Triceratops, so all the big players. So if I was a paleo artist, I would be imagining all these things together. And then I'd also be looking at creatures that are alive today. So I realized that little puppet that I had made the other day was probably about as big as this little dinosaur that they found. So you can use art to make a flat image or maybe you want to make a 3D image out of clay, or I've made this one out of felt. And imagine how it might dive bomb a little fish in the water and catch it with all those sharp teeth. So if you want to check out that article, um, I think Reba's linked it for me, so you can actually check out the um, article that was published just last month. So yeah, pretty cool. We're learning new stuff every single day. The second thing I want to talk about is a dinosaur that is one of my favorites and that is an Archaeopteryx. So, an Archaeopteryx was a dinosaur, I actually have a toy here, is important for paleontology because it's one of the first dinosaurs where scientists discovered a connection between birds and dinosaurs. So we knew that dinosaurs had feathers, some of them had feathers, and we knew that a lot of dinosaurs didn't have feathers, and we'd never found two of those things together. So the Archaeopteryx has really heavy bones, just like a dinosaur would. And it also has a long tail 
and wings, just like a bird. So um, it's called a transition fossil, an in-between fossil that helped us learn about how dinosaurs and birds, those traits, evolved. So Archaeopteryx was about as big as a raven, so and weighed about two pounds, so as much as about as big as this bag of sugar right here. So um, a few years ago, in about 2013, what scientists did is they took a peek at a feather, a piece of a feather, under a really, really heavy x-ray. So an x-ray that was brighter than the sun. And they figured out that the chemistry made the um, animal probably black. And so for a couple years, everybody thought that Archaeopteryx was black. Until a couple years ago, they got a full feather and dinosaur, or um, not dinosaur, scientists realized that they actually was more accurate to this toy. So this toy was used some really current research. And so they had black tips and more white. But what this toy doesn't show is that they were more iridescent. So kind of like this hair curler that I have here. Their colors would shift in the sunshine. And how they did this was, looking at the x-ray, they compared um, the chemistry of the fossilized feather to the chemistry of bird wings today. So maybe today you can go outside and observe, they compare Archaeopteryx to ravens and things like that. Maybe you can find a raven or a big black bird in the sky. Watch how it moves. Watch its feathers. Do they change color in the light? And maybe you can make your own de depiction of an Archaeopteryx. Because I know the toy that I have here is somewhat accurate but it doesn't have that ear doesn't pattern. So there's still things that we are learning today. Which leads me to one of my favorite dinosaurs and probably one of your favorite dinosaurs too, is the T-Rex. So I'm gonna share with you one last link and that is to the most current depiction of a T-Rex out there. So a lot of times we think of T-Rex as fast and ferocious. Um, the most current link though, they're quite chubby and large. And so there's this big debate whether or not dinosaurs had feathers or whether or not T-Rex had feathers. And a lot of scientists think that they do have feathers because um, a lot of their relatives did. And so when we talk about feathers, that's the same stuff that they're made out of keratin, which is the same stuff that your fingernails and your hair are made out of. And so these scientists that came together um, put keratin plates on them. And then just a couple of years ago, the Smithsonian had um, T-Rex with feathers on their back. So it's constantly changing. But go check out that site. It has a big fat and actually slow Tyrannosaurus rex with a large brain. So really still ferocious hunters, but our image of them is ever evolving. So if you'd like to take a stab at paleo art today, go outside, look at some birds, maybe do some research on your, on your own. Um, one found with teeth was the hummingbird size. Oh, so the hummingbird um, one was found in a little bit of the amber. I'm not sure if that was the question. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll respond to the comments in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's still, like I said, there's tons of research coming out. So check it out. Um, I know the Smithsonian National Museum also has, you can do virtual tours. So if you want to look at the bone structure of dinosaurs and create your paleo art off of that, you're welcome to do that too. So think about your tools. Do you want to paint today? Do you want to draw? Do you want to make a 3D sculpture? Maybe you want to act it out and imagine the slow Tyrannosaurus and how he would hunt. How would you move slowly and get your prey? So anyways, that's all for today. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. And tomorrow we're going to do some more, we're going to do some floating activities. So get creative with water tomorrow. All right.